But the element lookup is a really interesting tool, and you can find it here when you pull up your power pack uh, ribbon. It's right here about the, uh, I think the sixth tool here, six set, and it's under this uh, grouping called identity, right? And so traditionally, as you're building a database of information um, composed of families that have parameters, typically you're thinking about those being selected by uh, say category or by family specifically, it, it's generally very um, kind of one dimensional how you select things, right? So for instance, if I want to go and look at grabbing something like this wall, right? I can kind of mouse over it and you can see, okay, that's uh, a wall and it's in a, a general work set here and I can see the type uh, and I can make that selection, right? I can also go in um, and think about finding system families from you know, the, the project browser, right? So I can go and find a whole group of, of those types of walls, right? By pulling it up here and saying something like, you know, select all instances, right? I can, I can do that. The thing is, it doesn't really talk about more sophisticated nuances based on parameters, right? Like, for instance, what if I wanted to go and create a selection set of a particular category and it have a set of parameters that were in common? Like, for instance, if I know I needed to have, um, you know, select all of the doors on a particular floor, right? Well, I can think about going to a plan view and trying to isolate those in the view um, and you know, hopefully my my view settings allow me to do that. Often I want to think about it though in a way of of you know, could I really think about the categorization not dependent on the view and the parameters associated with that? And that's really what the element lookup tool begins to do, allow you to create not only more sophisticated queries, but also the ability to save those queries and make them repeatable, right? So just to give you a scenario, as I said, with that last uh, example, what if that is commonly something we do every project, right? And maybe it's, um, you know, working with a, a door hardware consultant or something, and we've got to isolate uh, a, a single floor or a single um, set of, of doors across the project with specific parameters, and then having that built as a configuration, that's gonna save me time the next time I do it. And then maybe I'm a BIM manager and I'm building this as a, a configuration that I want my users to use as they do this type of work. So you start to see the real power, or at least the concept of the power uh, of having an element lookup uh, do that. So I'm gonna pull this tool up and you can see it, it has to go and look at all the parameters available and think about what's all in the model, right? So the larger the model, obviously the longer it's going to uh, take for the configuration. This is actually, you know, a, a pretty good size model. Um, and so it did it fairly quickly. So it's it's something that um, I, I think you can jump into pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easily. So the way the element lookup works is first, it's got a configuration, right? So for instance, um, you know, we don't have any configurations yet, so we'll work to build one here in a minute. But if I had had a list pre-prepared, I could just pull down from this and, and it would have that query ready to go, right? So as I create these and manage these, um, I'm, I'm saving or shaving off steps in, in future queries, right? Um, I can also think about particular views, as I said, uh, I can go and select a set of things or I can do it for the entire project. So that really allows, the scope allows you to be able to pick you know at what what hierarchy of of um, the selection set you want. In this case, the premise I was giving you is let's let's go thinking about it based on project. Now, that's pretty straightforward so far. I think where it starts to become uh, to me pretty powerful is the ability to build an argument for what information you're you're viewing, right? Uh, and in so this case, if we look up this query here first, it's asking for 
frankly, a set of parameters right here, and it's loaded every single parameter for every single object. And I don't know of any exceptions for that in in the um, in the project, which I think is really interesting. But it also gives you the ability to kind of filter these, right? So we got built in parameters versus user defined parameters. Um, I can do string parameters, number parameters, uh, integers, yes, no, uh, and then element based parameters, right? So if I wanted to get down to very specific sets here, I can limit those. All right. Now, the first thing I want to think about is how do I isolate something like a door, right? Well, you might think, okay, well, what is what is uh, what is doors compared to walls or floors or annotation? Well, they're all categories, right? So could we isolate doors as a category? So I'm going to go find category here first. In fact, let me go ahead and open it all up so I can see all of them here. So if I go and find uh, category, here's category listed, and you can see it's got that number of category or that or that parameter category. All right. And so I'm going to choose to um, build that first thing on category. So I want to isolate category. And you can see here that I've got listed equals, category equals something. Okay, so what is that category? And you can see here it's listed all the different categories in the project. Okay, so we wanted to go to doors. Now, one thing you could do is just mouse over and then type in the first letter of the category and it'll jump to it. So in that case, I just typed in D and went right to um, uh, the D's here. All right, in this case, I got doors, so I'll select that. So I'm saying the category is doors. I wanna select all of the doors. If I did the search now, I would pull up all the doors in my list. All right, I wanna get more specific. So I wanna put together another parameter to search for, and this is further isolating it. It's saying, OK, what's the next um, thing that we want to search for? All right, so I might say, well, you know, if the premise is we're going to try to find doors based on the first level, right, then I can look for level in the list here, right? Now you see here in this case, it level is listed multiple times. That's because in, in this case, it is this uh, uh, multiple parameters are using the tag or the name level in in their identity, right? So you say, okay, well, how do I get down to specific things? Well, I can use some of the filters down here, uh, but I know that in terms of level, this is where I'm going to default to because that goes back to the idea that uh, a, a level is a parameter in the project that things can attach to. So in this case, level, level, right? So when I do that, I should then get a list of all the levels in the project. OK, you can see here I've got the first through the fourth floor. Now the way they've got listed in the model, which is not necessarily the way I would do it, is it's based on a um, plan view. We know that typically when you start um, a, a plan view and you base it on a level, you got to give it a specific name of the level and not necessarily the 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 view name, right? So something that this uh, the author of this file could have done better with. Uh, but just to give you an example of where if we had chosen something different, if I'd said level in this case, say string, I'm not sure what this is attached to. I don't even have any options here, right? Uh, and let's try this other one element ID. OK, so in this case, we can kind of tell what is the right level. And of course, we speculated here based on level as the parameter type that that's where we wanted to be. All right, so I'm going to select this first floor. So with this argument so far, I'm saying let's pick a category here of doors. So let's pick all the doors on level one. OK, and of course, I could keep adding additional properties. Let's say I wanted to have a specific, um, I don't know, um, a range of numbers, like door numbers I could do. I could do um, additional parameters that might relate to, uh, in this case, the, the doors, but also uh, could relate to uh, level potentially. All right. So I think this is as, as um, complicated as I want to get right now. So category, doors, and level on the first floor. So all 
first floor doors and we're going to do a search here and it's going to go look through the database and pull those all up okay now the way it organizes it and it found 29 different doors on that first floor see it's got a list out here it's organizing it based on the uh the, the id mm -hmm, by default and you can see here it's all got the door category some of these have marks some don't right uh, unfortunately, I can't go in here and add a mark to that one, but I might make a note of that um, to go and look later. Now, I could potentially go in and isolate this one and, and move to that door and, and add a, um, a mark to it. Um, but, you know, seeing this list, it's essentially the same type of thing you're going to get with a schedule, right? So being able to pull up these this details in the schedule as well, I think is useful. But you can see here the parameters I set for level and for um, the category doors first level okay so pretty easy to be able to go in and set up a query specifically based on the internal parameters uh, in a project which i think is really interesting now thing is what can we do with that you know what what do i want to uh, do well maybe i want to um, select those right so i can select the elements um, that that are all listed here Right, and I can do that. Um, I could go in and I could also isolate these specifically. Now, Lance, if you, if you uh, decide to uh, use any of this information, mm -hmm. um, you hit OK and you go in and let's say modify one of these doors. When you come back to your element lookup, what happens to your query? Does it stay there? I'm not sure. Save it. Is that something you've tested? Nope. Just just kind of throwing it out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see if we can isolate these. I'm going to save these as first. I'm going to save these as my, you know, um, this query. Let's say first floor doors. This is what I was talking about, where we start from a blank one, but we're able to save it. And so anytime that I have a query. I selected that and you can see it's isolated those first floor doors. All right, but your question was to go back and see um, when I've modified those. That was that the question? Yeah, Philip. Now it, oh, it's gone. Yeah. So if we would have we could have yeah. saved a current configuration for future use. Yeah, let me let me share that again. So we're going to pick the doors again. start typing in do that way i can just pick oh i'm sorry we're gonna actually go category first so category cat i'm gonna pick doors is our list here and we're gonna pick level and we're gonna pick that level which we established earlier and i check that off and i'm gonna set that to the first floor I'm going to do my search. OK. And then I've got that selected. I can add new and say. First floor doors. I want to I feel like it's going to yeah, it's going to update that so I can then select that. I've got my things I've selected and I can save it. Oh, it's wanting to save back to. Let's try that again. All right. Just list that. OK, okay. so if I if I back out of it, if I say OK to that and I'm going to go back to pulling that up, hopefully it'll have that listed as one of my configurations. Oh, it's reset. <laughs> yeah, usually it uh, it should be in that drop down. Yeah, well, no, it's not showing that. Hmm. Let's try it from the other other angle. I don't think I'm doing it wrong. 
Yeah, I've, I've done that uh, in the past, and uh, when you come back to it, it should have that list. So you can have a, uh... oh, you know what? I, I wonder if, uh, yeah, what you just did there, go in and set it to be first floor doors. Yeah, I think I was now, I now you're to myself. Yeah, yeah you're, you're applying it to an empty configuration. First is the category. It always goes super, super quick the third time, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then, and, and we just we have to keep in mind that we're building this for uh, future use, so we want to get it right the the uh, uh, at the beginning. All right, so we're going to say I was going to go back to level. Just says going, just continuing that same query. All right, and then we're going to search that. Let's try to save it. Now it's saying I need that, but I th I just assume that that's gonna that's gonna save that. If you click on the configuration settings, oh, that should just be okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. Let's see if that goes back. Third time's a charm. There it is. But yeah, except that it wasn't pulling the save. Oh. All right. It's got to have here. Let's do it. Let's do default. And I want to make prove this works. So we go category again. We're going to go doors. And again, it goes fast. Yeah, I, I have saved my configurations and been able to go back to them and it, it saves that information. And say I've done it before. I'm not sure what the difference is this time. Level. You know, it's because I'm doing it live. <laughs> All right, so if we search and then we try to save that and then I go. First floor doors. And I go OK. And I go back to. Element lookup. And I go first floor doors. I don't I don't know why it's not holding on to that information. Interesting. Well, I wish I had an explanation for that. I'm gonna test it out on mine here quick and see if I can get it to work. Yeah, I'll, see if it's I'll come back to that. So it's something that's different. I know that uh, that uh, is a uh, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate for that. Hmm. Well, regardless of whether you're saving the configuration, I mean, the, the the thing is, I think to me, part of the uh, the goal here is to build configurations of queries that help support workflow, right? So if there are things that we're constantly looking for selection sets and we can build that into the configuration and build that into templates and everyone's de um, deployments, it's easy for the team to have a specific set of parameters that they search for consistently as part of the workflow rather than having to create selection sets on their own. So conceivably having this work could save uh, a team a lot of time. Now, regardless of whether you're able to save the configuration or not, the ability to go in and do a, a, a string query like this, I think, is still very powerful. Um, so, um, the uh, you know getting getting the saving to work is important, but uh, it still allows you, even without being able to save, to do uh, an impressive set of, of searches based on specific parameters contained in the project. All right. 
Uh, any questions about that? I know it wasn't the smoothest demo. I apologize. <laughs> um, but hopefully you're getting some of the um, some of the ideas are coming across to you. Misty, do we have any questions? Hey, Lance, I don't see any in the chat box. I know we've got Joe and Miss Sherry on if um, you guys had any questions. Joe, can I ask a question if you uh, had a chance to to try out the power pack or is this your kind of your new new to it? I'm kind of new to it. I'm on the detailing end of things, but I do some work for engineers and architects. And I've had the whole package for a while. I'm just trying to get to where I can use it all together. OK. Uh, can I ask about some of the tools that you use in it? Uh, right now, it's just kind of on the shelf and I can play with a little bit, but everything right now is still AutoCAD. <laughs> you know, that, and that's the uh, and that's the least effective place for it, Joe, on the shelf. I'm just going to tell you that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all it's all installed here, but I've tried to install the new 2023, but apparently I need a new computer for that. I've never had software just tell me, no, I'm not going to install. So. <laughs> oh, OK. Now, was that what is that? Was that an Autodesk message or? or yeah, I just us? tried. I tried to install. Uh, I think it was Advanced Steel 2023, and it says your computer doesn't meet minimum specifications. Uh, goodbye. Well, that's so not I, very nice. No, not usually. It it lets you do it, and it'll it'll crash or it won't work quite right. That's that's fine. I'll accept the responsibility, but uh, this won't even let me do it. So I'm in the, in the process of getting a new computer to see if I can make it work. I understand. I wonder if that's uh, OS based or if it's um, looking for, um, you know, a probably minimum I mean, CPU I'm, or could be all of the above. But I'm guessing the biggest culprit is probably Windows Seven. Windows Seven. No. Yep. yep. There you go. I think that's Peter's ten years old. I mean, it's an, an i7 with 16 gig of RAM. It was big in its day, but it's it still runs most things fine. But yeah. Oh, well, I mean, a, could it could you update the, the Windows Seven? I wonder. I could, but to what ten? You know, I guess, which is going out of style and 11, you need to have certain up to, you know, eighth gen processor or newer or something. I think I'm just just beyond that. So it's probably yeah. not worth the hassle of doing all that. I'm just going to go ahead and get a new 10 years is a good, good, good that's run a good, for a rig. So that's that is a good run. You've got your money's worth out of that one. And everything now is new and, and bleeding edge. So I think this one should last me a good while unless they keep. Lock, locking everything to whatever software you're on, you know, operating system you're on or something. Yeah, and having been a part of software companies for a while here, I mean, that's one of the challenges because you've got a group, whole group of people that are using your product, and you got to think, okay, on this side, I've got people who are constantly trying to push the envelope and get me to make new things, and um. And then you've got the other side of what people saying, well, I, you know, I have this is what I have and I need it to work on what I have. Right. Right. And over time, that gulf becomes greater. Right. I remember there was a time where every 18 months I was getting a new rig because my yeah. company would give me one. And <laughs> so, you know, you're thinking, oh, OK, well, can I make technology for this new thing? And if you're constantly making that new technology, because right. right. Autodesk will tell you that they um, and I worked for Autodesk for about 16 years, they support the current version and the three previous. Well, that means every year there's, there's, they stop supporting a previous version. Right? right. And so, you know, if you got minimum specs that are constantly rolling forward and you think, okay, well, nobody's using, you know, 2016 anymore. So what was the specs for 2016 versus what they are for 2023? Right. right. And so, you know, that's that's the challenge. I think the good news for us, though, is um, you think about when I bought my first computer back, geez, 1994. Um, you know, I had to spend a good chunk of my uh, my income to, to right. get a computer that could run anything. And nowadays I just bought a new rig uh, last year and and it was probably one hundredth the the price of my of my um <laughs> of my income you know, from from the you know 25 right. 30 years before right and it, because right. computers have gotten that much 
more ubiquitous and, and cheaper and things. So you can get, and, and I mean, the good news for even running some of these powerful programs, you know, Revit used to struggle without, you know, having a high end uh, desktop. And now I can run it on, I probably run it on a tablet. Right. right? Um, and, 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 and so that's, that's, that's good news. And so for you, when you get a new rig, you could probably get something uh, comparable specs that you got 10 years ago, but probably a quarter or, or maybe even a tenth of the price. Yeah, right? but I want to stay the same, same specs I've got, but I'm going to not usually a bleeding edge kind of guy, but it's just because everything's so new right now, 11 is new, the processor is new, the memory is new, the VRAM is new, the video card's new. Yeah. It's all just brand new. It's like, well, if I do back up one layer, I'm just that much further behind you know, a few years out. So I'm going to go ahead and. See if I can get a new one to work. With everything, the, the problem is just coming up with the specs that'll don't have any bottlenecks in it. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just you know I I give you a couple of uh, recommendations on uh, hardware that I like. The thing about if you're if you're getting more into uh, and Philip's going to show us uh, an example here that I was going through and having trouble with. If you're if you're um, you say you're 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 you're, you're Company still fairly new to to BIM, or have they been using BIM for a while? Well, I work for myself here, and I've had this the software for years, and it's just uh, I haven't had time to figure out how to take the models and turn them into to drawing. So I still just use AutoCAD for everything. I've had to, oh, okay. I've so, done a few yeah. I've done a few models in in advanced steel, um, you know, for for BIM coordination. But then when I got the drawing part of it, well, I don't know how to do those, so I'll just make them in AutoCAD, and you know, it's a little little bit of a stretch on some things. I did one project where I I did the structural design on a air conditioning platform, so I use Advanced Steel, Revit, and Robot back and forth, and there's still lots of problems with interactions between the three programs that, you know, one program says, this is your, here's your double channel, and then you convert it over and convert it over. It's like, well, yeah, we have double channels too, but it's not those, so you get to redefine everything there. So it was a, a bit of a hassle, and that was about two years ago, okay. I think, that, uh, you know, I, and I talked to some I don't know how how high up in, in Autodesk they were, but I had a conversation years ago when this when they first bought Robot, I think, in Revit. And okay, where do I start? Where's the best place to, you know, this, you show me all this interoperability. Where do I start my model? Is it better to do it in Revit, or is it better to do it in Advanced Steel, or in Robot? And it was just nothing but crickets. You know, just I don't know. <laughs> what are you more comfortable with? I guess, but you know, the whole inter interoperability thing is still, I think, a bit lagging. You know, in my part, I just work for myself, so I don't have a, a firm buying me computers and, hey, you're going to go get some training or something. So I've had some training, but it's, I haven't been that impressed with it. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You know, no, I having, part of the problem you... with training is that it's it's made for people that work for a big company. So if you're doing your own thing, if you take it back to an AutoCAD level, you need to know how to set up your your tech styles and your dimension styles and all that kind of stuff and, and create a, a base for yourself. But it, that's that's more that's beyond advanced training for a lot of the training packages that are out right. there. So it's Cause, nothing's cause geared to how do you get started out of the box. Right. Because you're you're not only the user, you're the manager. Right. Everything, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the owner, the manager, <laughs> yeah, the janitor. That makes, sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I mean the the, the just just a, a um and good luck with, with implementing that. I know I've been imp working with customers for twenty two years on implementing going from from a uh, CAD based to a BIM based workflow. So there are a lot of challenges. Um, it, I think it's easier to have, you know, to go from CAD to BIM than it was to go from hand drafting to CAD. <laughs> and that's really? something I did uh, early in my career because I was just on the cusp of really getting into CAD early right. on. But uh, the thing about the, just going back to your original question about the hardware, um, don't worry about getting too inexpensive of a video card. Um, because if you're not doing really, like really high end visualization, that's just to me, it's a, a it's a waste of money, and that's something right now that's you know people are very sensitive about because the prices for video cards are so high. So you know, yeah, I think they're starting to back off now, but you know, I don't know where the because there's different software. We've got the AutoCAD and Advanced Steel and and Revit, and they all use different different capabilities. I don't know. Yeah, yep. I'm kind of landing on the the. Uh, was it the A4000, I guess, it's a 16 meg card, but it's got the four ports I need for my four monitors. And mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that it's sounds not, like the most important thing about you know having the the number of monitors for you. The thing is, you said you know it, it and I also would look at trying to get a video card. You, you don't necessarily have to think about a professional workstation style video card because I remember it used to be, you know they they would sell those and they were essentially the same power as their kind of gaming uh, right. uh, uh, colleagues, right? Like the, the, the similar style, but they, they ended up being more expensive because of the way they were marketed toward businesses, right? right. Like, oh, the business has to have it. So it's not, it's, it's, it's not, you, you're getting less bang for the buck on those type of cards. And that's been my experience. So, you know, you can find uh, a, a middle of the road card that has the, num the number of ports that you need, and that should do just fine. I would spend most of my money on uh, one trying to get one of the newer um, uh, what they call NV uh, IE drives or M N uh, NVMe yeah yeah that's yeah. it those uh, I I have one on my rig works great super fast um, those have come down in price I would definitely uh, get one of those obviously having enough RAM is important and then processor wise you know. Um, I, mean, I love the AMD ones. I own stock in AMD and Intel, so I'm kind of on both, right. both sides. But and I've worked and I've done work with um, uh, with Intel as a, as an owner. But uh, I I buy the I, AMD cards right now. Just yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, just I had like a Serix chip back when Serix was a thing, and I've uh -huh. never really gotten into the AMDs. But you know, given that you know Autodesk and Intel and Microsoft are all kind of in the same same little club, there it's like well, I don't know. Seems like Intel's a better bet, and right now Intel's kind of jumped up above AMD at least for unless you go to Threadripper or something. So, mm -hmm. and my understanding yeah. is Revit really is the is the Revit is not a parallel processing type of environment, mm -hmm. so it's just a it's just a down and dirty. How fast can you can you go through this one thread? And yeah, yeah it the, the thing is, if people talk about well, it can take multiple cores. The problem mm -hmm. is, it often doesn't have an operation that does that. Right. right, like I could, I could, uh, when I'm doing rendering, I could, I think I could go to multiple. The, the thing is, that's a very small percentage of the kind of the work that you're doing. Right. So it's, it, you know, it, yeah, it's. It, yeah, the way it, I heard it explained is, well, if you move a doorknob or something, well, that moves the doorknob in the door, in the wall, in the, and it's just, it's all, you can't do one thing ahead of the other. You've got to, you've got to, it's all in series. Yeah, and, and, so and whole, the, that's meant to, that's obviously uh, meant to save you time. But right. again, it's it is you know an intensive operation. So, right. Well, yeah. Good luck with that. I think Philip, you've gotten uh, an, uh, you've tested the element lookup, and you want to show how it's yeah. saving on your side. I don't know if uh, you might need to do a reload on yours or something. It might uh, do because it wasn't user mine, error, was it? <laughs> mine seems to be working just fine, and and yep. I created a few different configurations. So I I copied first the one that that you did there. Um, did the search works fine. Um, so when I go ahead and hit OK and I come back to the element lookup, I still have my first floor doors and I can get to structural columns here. I did one for that, looking for structural columns and then a specific type of column uh, within my project. Did one here for wall types as well, looking for a specific type of wall. Uh, within the project here too. So I can click search and it gives me the list of all those components within there. So um, just backing up Lance here, it, it does work. <laughs> I, I don't know what's wrong with Lance this day. It's just I wasn't holding my mouth right. The the live the live <laughs> show anything can happen. That's right. That's right. Well thanks for for uh, showing that it does work. Yep. 